Welcome to Just a Minute. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nicholas Parsons. And as the minute waltz fades away, once more it's my huge pleasure to welcome our many listeners, not only in this country, but around the world. But also to welcome to the programme four exciting, humorous and talented performers who are going to display their talent as they talk on the subject that I give them. And they try and do that without hesitation, repetition or deviation. And they are seated on my left. It's a huge pleasure to welcome back one of that finest exponents of this particular game and one of our finest comedians Paul Merton and seated beside him we welcome for the first time playing the game a rock poet performer and also a local lad and that's Ian McMillan and seated on my left we have another fine exponent of the game who also is a great comedian and he also is a writer uh, that is Tony Hawks and seated beside him we have someone else who's playing the game for the first time a delightful charming exuberant comedian Shappy Cosandi would you please welcome all four of them thank you beside me sits Trudy Stevens, who's going to help me take a note of the score, she'll blow a whistle when the 60 seconds have elapsed. And this particular edition of Just a Minute is coming from the delightful and beautiful Opera House in that fine city of Manchester. And, and as you can hear, we have an excited Mancunian audience in front of us, ready for us to start the show. And let's begin with Paul Merton. Paul, oh, a topical subject for starters. Old Trafford. Tell us something about it. <laughs> Mixed emotions. <laughs> That's whether they are cricketers or footballers, I suppose. Anyway, anyway Paul, <laughs> Old Trafford, 60 seconds, starting now. Oh, indeed, Man City fans. Old Trafford was a golden Labrador I spent many happy years with in my childhood. He was a faithful old hound and would go running towards me across the hills of East Sussex as I made my way home from the toffee factory where my parents had sent me at the age of five to bring home a decent living. <laughs> Trafford, I can see him now munching a hum bone. What's a hum bone? Doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything, that. I should have buzzed myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hum bone? I think you were searching for a ham bone, weren't I you? was. Yes. Yeah. Or was it a humbug? It, it was, oh, dear toffees, you see, that's where that's yeah, the, yeah, uh, the inner workings. Yeah, that's it. The inner workings well, yes, revealed for once. That's it, that's right. Yeah. But Tony, you buzz first. You have a correct challenge. And you get a point for that. You take over the subject. 39 seconds are still available, and you start now. Many years ago, I was a student up here in Manchester, and I went along to Old Trafford to watch my team, Brighton and Hove Albion, attempt to beat them. <laughs> the thing is, I went in the wrong bit of the ground. I was in the Stretford end, and when Brighton scored, I leapt in the air. A uh, poor challenge. A repetition of Brighton. Ah, yes. Yes. Ah, yes. Yeah. Repetition. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Paul, the correct challenge, you get a point for that. Are the 22 seconds still available? Tell us more about Old Trafford starting now. In the 1960s, they were very much the glamorous team. Although I lived in London, you couldn't help but see Manchester United with their wonderful players, George Best, Dennis Law, Bobby Charlton, Paddy Crerand, Bill Fuchs, Alex Stepney, and all the other players that I wish I could think of now that would... Uh, Ian, you've challenged. I think you repeated players. Yes, you yes. did indeed. <laughs> Well, listen, Ian, and you've got in on the subject, and there are only seven seconds available. And it is still Old Trafford. Let's hear from you for the first time, starting now. Old Trafford was a site of one of the great moments in English football in 1998, when Barnsley FC played Manchester United in the third round. <laughs> In this game, whoever is speaking as the whistle goes gains an extra point, and it was our first time player of the game, Ian McMillan, and he has two points at the end of that round. Tony has one, Paul has one, Shappy's yet to score. Ian, will you start the next round? Oh, it's a right northern subject. Mm. Our kid. <laughs> will you talk on that subject, Ian, starting now? Our kid in this instance is my brother John, mm -hmm. who is six years older than me, and we're quite alike, except that he's completely bald. So if you can imagine a 60-watt light bulb with my face embossed on it, that's what he looks like. Now, we also sound exactly the same, so when we meet on the street... Uh, Shabby challenge. I think he said exactly twice. He, he did say exactly that's twice. That's because I'm from the north. <laughs> well, listen... <laughs> 
Well, listen, Shappy, you've got your first point. You've got the subject. It's our kid. There are 44 seconds still available, and you start now. Our kid, I guess, in my family would be me, although, strictly speaking, I don't count because I'm not from the North, and I hope you'll forgive me. Sorry. As... Uh, <laughs> Tony, you challenge. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to withdraw that. I was an in, it was a kind of a... I thought there was a hesitation. Reaction, but it, yeah, I think Because you played the game so often, exactly. you pick up on every simple... Thank you, I was breathing. Yes. And, uh, I know. <laughs> And you're going to be generous and let her have another yeah, go absolutely. and not take it away. Lord bite. love you. No. <laughs> well, of course, Shabby, as you were interrupted then, you get a point for that. Oh, thank you. And, uh, and so you have 36 seconds still, if you want to, on our kid starting now. So I'm our kid in our family. I have an older brother, my... Um, Paul Tallis. Uh, we had repetition of family. You did say our kid in our family when you started before. Yes, I have two families. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is indeed repetition. Uh, and that's repetition as well. Yes, you repeated family, so I'm afraid we can't need to get away with it that time, uh, Shappy. Uh, Paul, another point to you, and you have 33 seconds. Tell us something about our kid starting now. We used to call Old Trafford the Golden Labrador our kid. He was a uh, wonderful creature. He'd sit by the fire, eat a ham bone, and it was a delicious sight to see him. What a wonderful creature. He'd come running... Uh, Ian Challenge. You repeated wonderful, I think. I know, he, he was such a great dog. Yeah, yes. No. <laughs> But you can't say wonderful all the time in just a minute. So, Ian, you've got another correct challenge. You have our kids still. Uh, 22 seconds starting now. Our kid and I meet on the street and he says... <laughs> Summer's challenge. Who's that? Paul? Yeah, repetition the... of meet on the street. You meet on the street. When we say. meet on the street. We've only got one street. Yeah. Where else no, is no, it yeah. to meet in Barnsley? <laughs> Right, 19 seconds, Paul. It's back with you. Our kid, starting now. Our kid is a phrase I associate with Liverpool quite a lot. I think Scylla Black used to use the expression fairly amount on television and fairly... Uh, <laughs> <tell you. laughs> English is a very fluid yeah, language, yeah, don't you yeah, find? So, yeah. I don't want him to embarrass himself further. No, no, so. no. no. <laughs> I think we knew what you meant, Paul, but uh, yeah. it was deviation from English as we understand it and yeah, usually it speak it. And we do try and stick to correct grammatical yes, English in this uh, show. So, uh, Tony, you've got in now on our kid there are 12 seconds still available starting now our kid was a pet goat called Jeffrey. we kept him in the garden i took him to old trafford once to see brighton and hove albion play a very exciting game. shappy challenge i'm really sorry because you withdrew your challenge to me but i think you said brighton about twice no darling you said brighton <laughs> in the other round uh. <laughs> in that case i shall be generous and withdraw <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to use any words ever. Because <laughs> we'd all said them before this round. <laughs> I know, and trying to remember the ones you'd use in other rounds as well. So, no, you, you can use the same words here. <laughs> Shabby, don't look embarrassed. We love it. It's your exuberance that we've engaged you for. <laughs> right. <I've> got. <laughs> mm. So, uh, Tony, an incorrect challenge, a point to you, and two seconds available only. Our kid starting now. My brother once said to me, the most important thing in life. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Tony Hawkes is speaking as the whistle when gained that extra point. He's now equal in the lead with Ian McMillan and uh, then Paul one point behind and then Shappy one point behind them. And Shappy, will you begin the next round? Mm, yeah. The subject is, the last time I won something. You have 60 seconds as usual, starting now. The last time I won something is possibly not going to be this game after it has finished. I won't be able to say that to my friends. I don't know if that's English. It's my second language. Give me a break. I last won something uh, in 1984, and it was the novelty race at Montpelier Primary School. Now, the novelty race, I came first. Race, oh. race. It's all about race with me. It isn't. <laughs> Give her a bonus point, because the audience loved her <laughs> comment then. But, Paul, you challenge. Well, it was novelty race. A novelty race, race, yes. Uh, yeah, so the last time I won something, Paul, is uh, with you, and 42 seconds available starting now. I think last time I won something was a BAFTA, but that would be a bit immodest. So let me take you back <laughs> to 1968, when I was playing for Remco Royals in a little league football team. Oh, it was wonderful. I was the goalkeeper, and we played in the championship, and we play, won. Play, it was fantastic. Yes. I still have... <laughs> Chappie, you, you, you've challenged. Oh, I believe, Mr Merton, you said played twice. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, listen, Chappie, well done. You're really on the ball there. <laughs> so that's the correct challenge. And you have 28 seconds still available. Tell us something about the last time I won something starting now. 
It was not easy winning the novelty race. At, you see, oh. yeah, sorry. <laughs> then it was Tony who challenged first, wasn't it? Yes, I think it... Was it a repetition of novelty? novelty. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you've got 26 seconds. The last time I won something, Tony, starting now. I haven't won a BAFTA, but I did win the British Actors' Tennis Tournament in 1994. What a victory. Tim... Uh, Paul Challenge. It's not much of a victory. He beat John Gilgood in the final. <laughs> <laughs> That's not much of a victory. He was 86. <laughs> Paul, I know it's completely untrue, but the audience <laughs> enjoyed it so much. Give him, Paul, a bonus point for that. This have, is you got, have you got a challenge within the rules of just a minute? No, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not my job to challenge. Oh, is it not? Oh, OK, no, then. No, so, I, haven't, uh, I haven't, I'm afraid. No, Paul, uh, no, it doesn't matter. We no. loved hearing from you. But, uh, Tony, you were interrupted. A point for that. Keep the subject. 16 seconds. The last time I won something, starting now. And as I stepped onto the podium to collect my cup, I said, will you give me an exciting part in the theatre. Please, to improve my career, they said, no, it's just this pathetic bit of silverware. I was sick as the proverbial parrot, and I never... <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Tony Hawkes is speaking of the whistle wind, gained the next point. He's now taking the lead ahead of Paul Merton, followed by Ian McMillan and Shappy Cossandy in that order. And, Tony, we're back with you to begin, and the subject now is the big question. Will you take that subject and go for 60 seconds if you can, starting now? There are many big questions. What was the possible explanation? Uh, Paul... Well, deviation. What? Well, the subject is the big question, and he started with the big... There are many big questions. Yes, there are. Yeah, but it's the singular, the big question, not the big questions. See what I mean? No, I, I, I see what you mean, yeah. but you're incorrect. Am I? Why? Because <laughs> you can talk about the big question, yeah. and that could mean to some people one thing and to another person something else. So that's the big question to him, and that's the big question to somebody oh, else. Yes, yes. Yes, that's right. Yes. Is it yes? Yeah. And so... Uh, yes. <laughs> it's a load of old rubbish, but what can you do? <laughs> No, I think the benefit of the yes, doubt goes enough. to Tony, and you have uh, um, 56 seconds to continue on the big question starting now. For instance, why do people go to India to find themselves when they can just visit those town centre maps that say, you are here? <laughs> so much easier, less hassle, a big question, in my opinion. Inflammable and flammable. They mean exactly the same thing. What's going on there? Another question, maybe not quite as big as the other one. Uh, Paul Chan. Deviation. If it's not a big question, why are we discussing it? <laughs> the subject matter is the big question. Not less big or less big, you know, the big question. Also, to be fair to Tony, to some people, something could be the big question, and to others, it's absolutely rubbish. It doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> yes. And uh, as you said, you talking about things which are inflammable, people could say, yeah, so what? Stuff it. Uh, others could say, yes, that is true. Very remarkable. Uh, benefit of the doubt to Tony. OK. Keeps the subject. <laughs> 32 seconds, the big question. <laughs> Starting now. What was the possible... And poor Charles. <laughs> when will I get the benefit of the doubt? <laughs> You've had it on many occasions, <laughs> and uh, there's been some doubt about it as well. Uh, so, uh, but, Paul, we enjoyed your interruption, so you get a bonus point for that. Tony was interrupted. <laughs> One person cheered out of 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm you... working her with me foot. Yeah. <laughs> what an incredible <laughs> foot you must have. Right out there. Another the big question. Another big question, yes. But, Tony, you were interrupted, so you get a point for that, of course. 31 seconds. We're still with you on the big question, starting now. Was there a possible explanation for them picking Sydney ahead of Manchester for the Olympics all those years ago? A massive question, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> Ian Challenge. I think we've had his opinion before. He's yeah, saying we have, my yes. opinion. Well, listen, yeah, Ian, he did. You were given too much of your opinion yeah. on this subject. I agree. <laughs> But, Ian, so you have a correct challenge, and you have 21 seconds still available. The big question starting now. To me, the shorter the question, the bigger it is. So a question like why, how, who, where, what, or when is, in fact, the big question. The more clauses, the more words a question has in its uh, sentence. Uh, poor challenge. Um, there was a repetition of the more. The more, the yes. More, the, more. the more, the more, the more. I know, it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> 
I'm a fat man. We shouldn't have any challenges at all. We should just sit and listen to everybody talking nicely. Right now. Shall we play it that way? Let's do that. Let's do that. Just a nice talk. Just a nice talk over a cup of tea. Let's do it that way. We won't be needing you anymore, Nicholas. That's what they want. Welcome to just a bit of a chat. <laughs> nobody interrupts, nobody gets any points, there aren't any laughs, and we all go home bored. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Call it just a biscuit. Uh, just a biscuit. <laughs> Nine seconds are still available, Paul. At another point to you, of course. The big question starting now. The big question is just a minute ready for a complete turnover. Get rid of all these particularly rough, strong, deliberate challenges. Instead, wallow in the beauty of the English language. Run for the floor. <laughs> Well, one minute they were again you because you interrupted their local hero, and the next ten minutes they were cheering for you because they enjoyed what you said. Can Paul. I just say, because you keep calling me a local hero, but I'm from Yorkshire. This is Lancashire. <laughs> <laughs> These people want to string him up. They right. do. Just because we've I got know, cap, I, it's I and know, shoes. I know. <laughs> but, but, but to all the southerners <laughs> listening, you're a northerner. Really? Yes. Never. <laughs> me, a northerner? No, Nicholas, no. Where do the northerners come from? You're mixing me up with Brian Blessed. He's a northerner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Surrey. <laughs> <laughs> you could have fooled me. I fooled Surrey for years. <laughs> <laughs> and you spoke like that in Surrey, did you? I did. And then I didn't know you were from Barnsley, Nicholas. You're from Barnsley. <laughs> well, Nicholas is from Barnsley. No, no. In with a tie, you know. I, 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 <laughs> I played a club in Wakefield once. Did you? Did stand up there, working men's club. That was an experience, I can <laughs> tell you. And when he told me, can you get a laugh here on a Friday? He said, no, it's not a laugh here on a Friday yet. <laughs> and I said, well, what happens on Saturday? He said, oh, pandemonium. Get up at the bar at the back, you can't bloody hear yourself. And I said to him, why do you ask all these comedians to come and play up here if half the time nobody's going to listen to them? And he came out with this amazing answer. Only in Yorkshire could you find He said, I'll have you know, young lad, I'll have you know, we have had some of the best acts in show business die up here. <laughs> That's Yorkshire for you. I don't know if they say it in Lancashire as well, I'm not sure. And Paul was speaking as the whistle went, yeah. gained that extra point. He's still in second place behind Tony Hawks. Uh, they're both a few points ahead of Ian McMillan and Shappy Cassandy in that order. And Paul, we're back with you to start. The subject now is the rule book, starting now. The rule book is a very important thing. As long as you understand the rule book, then you can start to break the rules contained therein. For example, if we look at the live art of improvisation comedy, Mr Tony Hawks and Mr Nicholas, that's two misters. Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> I should be buzzing myself. I'm getting them before anybody else. <laughs> Tony, you challenge first. Oh, uh, Sheppy, you just challenge as well. Yeah, actually, do you want this one, Sheppy? I think you buzzed before we made No, yeah. I, I... Oh, bless you, you're so nice. I buzzed about ten seconds Go after on, you. you, you <laughs> in, in a state of panic, because I yeah. felt like I ought to buzz. Um, well, and and the right, worst darling. thing is, I'm still it. not quite sure what he did wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Repetition of Mr. <laughs> He's put two misters, <laughs> Mr. Tony Hawks and Mr. Nicholas I'll tell you what, yes, you'd love this game if we did away with the rules, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony's been very generous, and Shappy, you come in with 48... Well, actually, I, I, th I thought we'd agreed that we weren't going to have any more challenges. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly the next round, Tony's all buzzed, all competitive uh, again. Yeah, yeah. Where's well, the tea and biscuits? I've got to have surrealist challenges, wouldn't that be funny? Yeah. Yes, you can have those, you can and go, have them in the past. You can just shout, euphonium. <laughs> or bring on a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> Try it, Shall we try it? <laughs> I think there is can. a zebra in the wings. <laughs> <There's laughs> <a zebra laughs> come from? Oh, is yeah. it a zebra or a barco? <laughs> right. <laughs> Take it to the supermarket, get 12 packets of Tenant's Lager. Mm. <laughs> there are 48 seconds available, Shappy. The subject is the rule book, and you start now. The rule book is very important, and I discovered this when I was called to do jury service, which is a very serious thing. You can't go by what the defendant's wearing. You have to listen to evidence. <laughs> It's what it says in the rule book. And when I was in jury service, my, my oh. yes, you said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm so good at this game when I'm listening to it That's in hell. my kitchen. Yes. <laughs> I think most people would say that. Do you know what? I tell you what, if you gave me a sack and a, and a spoon and an egg, I would win this. <laughs> Tony, you challenge 
and uh, yes. it was a correct challenge, and you have 30 seconds on the rule book starting now. It was suggested not that long ago on this very programme by Mr Paul Merton that we should tear up the rule book with regards to the challenges on just a minute. Let's just have a bit of a chat, perhaps. Uh, Ian challenged. I think you said just twice. Did. Yes, very you did. Together, just a minute. Yes. You mentioned just a minute, and you mentioned yes. just. Well, listen, dear, you have the rule book, you have 17 seconds, and you start now. I've read the rule book, and I think it will make a great film called The Rule Film. It will be a film that will be not that exciting. Oh. I was just pitching my film. Yeah. I know. You said film three times. I know, film. Multiplex. A multiplex. <laughs> One film after the other. Yeah, it was. Tony came in first. Tony, oh. the rule book is back with you. And there are 11 seconds starting now. I don't pay attention to the rule book when it comes to the roads and I'm cycling. I know it's controversial, but I love to go up a one-way street on my pedal-powered... Ian Challenge. That's deviation from the law. That's his it? deviation. <laughs> In yeah. other words, what we say is a very devious thing to do, therefore I think I will allow it. Um... <laughs> so well, these, it's only the book fair. that these laws are written down in, what's, what's that it? called? Highway Code. <laughs> <laughs> but that could be seen as a rule book, couldn't it, the Highway Code? Yes, yes. it is a rule book, yes. And yeah. there are certain rules of just a minute which are fairly elastic and I interpret them as I wish. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I've reinterpreted that one to bring Ian in again because he's new. And, oh, Ian, you've got him with only two seconds to go on the rule book starting now. I was walking down a street. Uh, Paul Challenge. <laughs> Hesitation. Hesitation. <laughs> I'm going to keep going this and you'll get the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> no. <laughs> That wasn't a hesitation, That sure? wasn't, no, no, it wasn't, no. He came in pretty sharp. Yeah. And he's still got one and a half seconds. The rule... Oh, so half a second went by, then. <laughs> oh, yes. It was a nice half no. second, wasn't it? I half enjoyed second, it. Half second, second. Half but, second went by. But, Paul, during that half second, he spoke. Oh, did he? Yes. Oh, well, it's not really half a second, then, is it? No, it wasn't. No, I see. It was half a second of pure comedy gold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I trampled all over it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> One and a half seconds. The rule book, Ian, starting now. Tony Hawk's on a bike. Oh, challenge. Ian, Shappy, challenge. I'm so sorry. I didn't hear a mistake, but if I don't win at least one sort of end of round thing, my husband will beat me. <laughs> well, on that now, occasion... There, there's a moral dilemma. <laughs> yeah. Shappy, you, you were pretty sharp there, because actually, on that occasion, Ian did actually hesitate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I knew that. I'm not even married. <laughs> so Ian gets a point for speaking when the whistle should have gone. And Chappy gets a point because she hasn't had one for speaking when the whistle goes. And we get a round of applause for both of them. And we move on to the next subject, which is poetic justice. This must have been chosen for you, Ian, because we know your gift with poetry mm. and words, so would you please talk on it, 60 seconds, starting now. Well, I think poetic justice is a good idea. Imagine judges delivering all their things in rhyme. I think you should go to jail because you are a nasty male. You robbed some people of their bikes, and then you took a hike and took the said implements with you. <laughs> Paul Chan. It was a repetition of talk. Yeah, there was a talk, yes, right. Mm. So, Paul, you it got It was a great sonnet, though. It was lovely. It was a good sonnet. Yes, I think it'll be enshrined. It'll be on Pick of the Week, I'm no doubt. Yeah. The, oh, um... I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> that... If it's a very thin week, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. What, what, what is the other... There's Poetry Today. Poetry Today? Is That's that still right, going? Yes. It was on yesterday, didn't was you? Was it? Yesterday? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I never That's tuned what... to it. It's always on tomorrow or yesterday. It's confusingly titled, that programme. You're thinking of Poetry Please. Poetry Please, that's right, yes. used to call Poetry Bollocks, but nobody would listen to it, so... They thought they'd be polite and call it poetry, please. <laughs> yes. I don't think you'll quite make it on that one. No, then. I don't think I will. No. <laughs> but uh, Paul had a correct challenge. He has 47 seconds. F poetic justice starting now. There was a young man from Bombay who took a slow boat to China one day. He was pinned to the tiller by a sex-starved gorilla, and China's a bloody long way. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, in my school days, reciting that poem to my... Friends, and then very much... Uh, Tony challenged. I don't know whether, it, uh, whether he repeated China. Yeah. <laughs> that's the limerick. In, 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 that's the limerick. It's in the first line. So <coughs> you're quite right, he did repeat China, but gosh, you... That, well, I'll tell you what I'll do there. Because it was a correct challenge, you'll get a point on the subject. But as we love the limerick and your delivery, you get a bonus point for thank that. Thank you, Nicholas, thank you. But more than... <laughs> 
So you may not be getting many benefits of the doubt, but you're getting plenty of bonus points. <laughs> Thank you. And, Tony, you've got 33 seconds. Poetic justice starting now. The boy stood on the burning deck on the way to China. Not much of a poem. And some people have turned to me and said, there is no justice in the fact there always has to be a rhyme. Perhaps Ian will enlighten us on this if... Uh, Paul Challenge. It doesn't always have to be a rhyme in poetry, no, does there? No, you don't have to no, 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 you, verse, you can have a... blank verse. No, three people, verse. When yeah. people say there always has to be a rhyme. Ned, well, who says this? <laughs> and the one you're working with your foot, yeah. she said it. <laughs> is this on, the way, on the way in, she came yeah. up to me in the foyer. Mm. Is this true, Maureen? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to just a minute. Paul. <laughs> Correct, John. You have the benefit of the doubt oh, on that yes, one, by the way. Yes, just. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a point. You have 19 seconds. Poetic justice starting now. There was a poet that I studied for my English O level called Gerard Manley Hopkins, who I believe Ian might be able to elucidate more on this, but he specialised in something called sprung rhythm. I'm not exactly sure what this was, because although I was attending class every single... There! Oh, uh, Ian Challenge. <laughs> Sprung rhythm yeah. is where the <laughs> word goes. Bedoin. Ah, oh, bedoin. That's where it is. So it goes, I wandered bedoinly as a clown. <laughs> ah. That walks on bedoin. Oh, that's sprung rhythm. There was Ian. a young man from Benoit that suddenly went bedoin. Yeah. Ian. His rhythm was sprung. Right. As he sat on his bum. <laughs> Ian. Morning, yeah. um, can I bring you back to the chair? Oh, sorry. <laughs> the biscuits I mean, haven't arrived at our <laughs> So it's give, give Ian a bonus point. <laughs> Paul was interrupted. He keeps the subject. Half a second to go. Poetic justice starting now. Dylan Thomas was born in Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it only remains for me to give you the final score. And, uh, oh, a very interesting situation, yes, because um, Chappie Cassandi, who's not played the game before, finished in a very strong fourth place. And uh, just ahead of her was Ian McMillan, who's also a first-time player. And then came Tony Hawkes, who has played it before. He was pipped at the post by Paul Merton, who was two points clear. So we say, Paul, this week, you are our winner. <laughs> right, we do... Uh, we do hope you've enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute, and it only remains for me to say thank you to these four fine players of the game, Paul Merton, Tony Hawk, Shabby Cassandi, and Ian McMillan. I thank Trudy Stevens, who's helped me note down the score. She'd blown her whistle with great aplomb. <laughs> and we thank our producer, Talusha Galani. We're indebted to Ian Messeter, who created this amazing game, and we're grateful to this lovely audience here at the Opera House in Manchester who've cheered us on our way. So from our audience, from me, Nicholas Parsons, and the team, goodbye. Tune in the next time we play Just a Minute. <laughs>